Today's mission is to finally finish upgrading the suspension on Neil's Rally Mini. Now, it was only supposed to be a couple of days' work, this project, and unfortunately, it has been rather fighting us. We managed to upgrade the front suspension with a couple of hiccups, we overcame all of those, got onto the rear suspension. It should have been much more like plain sailing. Obviously, it wasn't. We got everything together except for the last bolt, and then things didn't go very well. Oh, one more. That is not good news. The sound we're all hoping for was that lovely satisfying tick from the torque wrench as it gets to the right torque. But that snapping noise, I suspect, was the sound of all the aluminium threads stripping out of our replacement trailing arm. So clearly, obviously, the same thing that happened before and probably happens again and again on these cars. Now, I can't believe we've got so close and now I have to start all over again. I don't know how I'm going to fix it, but I'm not going to know that until I take it apart. Well, having taken it apart, it was indeed the steel bolt actually stripping the aluminium thread from inside the casting. Now, Neil had gone to the trouble of sourcing some replacement trailing arms because exactly the same problem had happened with his previous arms, and they had been repaired by one of these wire sort of spring-like inserts. And the idea is, of course, that once you strip your threads, you then re-tap some new threads, slightly bigger, you then insert one of these coils, and then, of course, the bolt threads can actually then work on the inside of your new bit of steel. Unfortunately, under really big loads, the wire threads actually start to move inside. They can kind of twist inside the rest of that hole. And of course, that's when they start to get a little bit weaker, perhaps. So well, I think, first of all, that repair had been done badly. And so perhaps they weren't actually seating properly anyway. But when it came to the new arms here, of course, they're only new to Neil. They'd already been on the car. When they're actually assembled in the factory, they're assembled using robots. And the robots have these special self-tapping bolts that just kind of wound in. Obviously, it's brilliant for a really fast assembly. But when it comes to undoing them again, what can happen is that those threads can get damaged. Now, what's quite interesting about these bolts is they actually have kind of three lobes on them. If I spin this round, you can see there's a sort of this stripe that goes through. It's actually quite easy, easy to feel what's going on. But basically, what's going on there is that those little lobes kind of help crush the aluminium into a different position to try and actually make the joint a bit stronger. But of course, when you undo all that, you undo some of that work. So when we went to tighten everything back up again, basically, as we're winding the bolt in, obviously, the threads of the aluminium in the casting, obviously, having been weakened, just literally sheared off as the bolt was tightened in. So rather than tightening the bolt up, it just pulled the aluminium out. So then we were left with no thread in our casting. So I needed a solution. Well, obviously, I wanted to go for something a little bit stronger than one of these coils. So I went with a time cert. Now, you can see this is like a solid cylinder of thread it goes on both the inside and the outside. Obviously, the thread on the inside is to the bolt we actually originally wanted, and then the thread on the outside then winds in to the aluminium. And it's quite an interesting process. Because I was so busy not blowing up a Range Rover, I sent Neil down to my mate Steve, who's a precision engineer, to actually get the job done on one of his nice big machines. Now, the first problem to overcome was the fact that Steve had to somehow clamp it down onto his milling machine, because obviously this is a very strange shape. It's been designed on a computer. It fits the car perfectly. It's nice and efficient, but it's really hard to handle. Obviously, there's no sort of flat surfaces anywhere to actually bolt things down to. So that was his first challenge. And of course, there were two holes to deal with. And they're symmetrical, so potentially one jig wouldn't be enough. So we've got, obviously, this re-threading to do, and also at that end, as well. So once he'd actually contrived a fantastic way of actually holding this onto his milling machine, the next stage was to make sure that it was all lined up, everything was perfectly in order, ready to actually make sure that he could then re-drill the holes. And so the first part of the kit is that's a very simple drill bit, just like that. And obviously, once you've got it in the right center, it was then possible to actually then drill out those bad threads. The next stage is to use this seating tool to actually counterbore the hole. So you can imagine you've now got your sort of drilled hole there. You can actually then use that little bit of the shank there to actually guide in this counterbore. And you can just about see on the edge there, it actually then cuts with little cutting bits. So as it's spinning in, it just kind of removes some material just to give a little bit of space ready for that bit on the top there, so that little top hat. So once that counterbore is in place, the seat has been cut, then you can move on to the next phase. So this is where I actually use a new tap. So this is 
16 millimeters by one and a half, whereas of course the bolt is 14 millimeters by one and a half. And the idea is then that you then tap that hole and obviously making some new thread. And this is the thread we're gonna be relying on to hold the time cert into the aluminium. Now the penultimate stage is to take the insertion tool, wind that into the time cert with a little bit of oil. And actually this is slightly bigger than the hole that's inside the time cert. And the idea is you then wind that into your freshly threaded hole. So once the time cert is then firmly in position, you then wind it even further, and then you start to wind that insertion tool onto the inside of the time cert. That actually then squishes it out into the aluminium, giving it a really, really high friction connection. So effectively, it's just jammed into the hole. And with this fix, our thread will be even stronger than the original. And once you've wound the insertion tool all the way in and all the way back out again, the time cert is now the perfect size ready for your bolts. And while Neil was there, obviously, he did both the holes on both the top and the bottom of the arm, but also did the other arm as well, so he's good to go. So now it's about time we fit it. So come on, Neil, where's my T? Let's get it on the car. There you go, Ed. Good job. Well done. Thank you, sir. OK. Good noise. So this is the moment. This is the bolt that stripped all the thread out of the aluminum before. Now it's fixed. Hopefully we should get a nice little click from our torque wrench. Just don't break it. Okay. Oh, it's worked. Wonderful. <laughs> what a wonderful moment. So we are now exactly where we were about nine episodes ago, which is wonderful. So now we can carry on where we left off. So I think now it's calipers, which are seized. Yes. <laughs> okay, do we have a plan for that? <laughs> we do. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by the workshop. If you enjoyed the video, even just a little bit, then click like. If you hated it, well then click like three times. Also remember to leave your thoughts and your questions in the comments. And obviously we'd love to see you again soon. So please remember to click subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell for notifications of when the next video is published or when I have some intriguing news.